Good morning, students. Good morning. Who can remind us uh, the previous topic we discussed together? Musime? Thanks a lot. The previous unit is projectile and uniform circular motion. Yeah, uh, the unit we discussed is the uh, projectile and the uniform circular motion. Uh, what does it mean, projectile? Cadness? Uh, thank you. The projectile is an object that is thrown or projected forward into space by a force. Thank you for a good uh, definition of projectile motion. And, uh, and also we have another keyword which is in that unity, which is a uh, uniform circular motion. Yeah, uniform circular means what? Divik. Uniform circular motion is the movement or motion of a body along circular path within constant velocity. Okay, thank you. Yeah, is anyone has a question about the, that topic? No one has a question for that topic? Okay, yeah, if there's no one has a question about that topic, today we are going to discuss new topic. It's the topic number nine. Yeah, the topic number nine is universe gravitation field potential. Yeah, please, for this one here, you see this word universe, is repeating again also for this key unity competence. Yes. We must first know what does it mean universe, and also what does it mean gravitation field potential. But the key word there is gravity. What do you understand by the term universe and the term gravity? Babla? Thank you. What I understand by universe is that universe is a is a collection of different planets which includes also the Earth. Yeah, can you come and write? Uh, thank you, Babla. Uh, she defined universe as is composed by different heavy bodies which is which include the Earth. Who has another definition for universe? Tito? Uh, thank you. Me, I can define universe as a collection of different heavenly bodies, including time, space, and other co continents. Thank you. Anyone who has uh, another definition, which is different for this one? By Ingana? The universe is endless space, which contains heavenly bodies, including planets and stars. Uh, thank you for your definition, please. Uh, all of you are talking about the universe is composed by the planets, stars, and the other bodies, including us. Are you together? Yeah, and also we have another word, gravity. What do you think about this gravity? Flaha? Gravity is the force exerted by the Earth that pulls the, an object towards the center of the Earth. Go and write it now. Gravity is the force exerted by the Earth that pull an object toward the center of the Earth. Yeah, I think that he is thinking about the, the Earth. Do you understand? But please remember for the first definition of the universe is made by different planets. Universe. Do you understand? Yeah. If now uh, she talked about only the Earth and also the other planet can exert this kind of force. Is anyone has a definition, another definition for gravity? Jivent. I understand gravity as force of attraction between any two massive bodies. Come and write it now. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, that now I can combine all those two definitions, universe and gravity. Then by also focusing for our unity. The unit is known as uh, universal gravitation field potential. 
Yeah, in this unit, we study, uh, we study the motion of the planets and also the force hold those planets together. Yeah, the planets, they are moving. Why the planets, they are not moving away? They are at the fixed position. Are you together? Yeah, means what? In this unit, we study the motion of the planets and also the force hold those planets together. Uh, let us now start with this uh, uh, video. Then we are going to watch it. Then after you discuss it in a group. We thought that the gravitational force is the attractive force between any two objects with non-zero mass separated by a distance. So does the apple fall towards the earth or does the earth move towards the apple or do both move towards each other? It's actually simple logic. This is the earth and say this minuscule object is an apple. Based on what we learnt about the gravitational force, both apply an equal force to attract the other object towards itself. So if the forces are equal, which one will accelerate more? Based on the Newton's second law, we know that the force applied is the product of mass and acceleration. So the acceleration will equal force over the mass. The acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass. If the mass is more, the acceleration will be lesser. As the mass of the earth is much, much, much more than the mass of the apple, it is the apple that accelerates towards the earth and not the other way around. Hope that makes it clear. Now the question is, how do we quantify this force? To understand this, we need to understand a simple concept. And this simple concept is called the universal law of gravitation. Say there are two objects, A and B, separated by a distance D. The distance between the centers is considered the distance between the two objects and not this distance. Assume that the mass of object A is m1 and that of object B is m2. As object A is bigger, let's assume m1 to be bigger than m2. The universal law of gravitation says that every object in the universe attracts every object with a force which is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Let me repeat. The force is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. With this data, we can write it mathematically like this. So if the mass of any of the objects increases, the gravitational force will have more magnitude. And more the distance between the two objects, the lesser will be the gravitational force. Directly proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. This can be written as F equals G times M1 times M2 over D squared. G here is the constant of proportionality and is called the universal gravitational constant. The equation can be modified and written as G equals F times D squared over M1 times M2. The value of G was found out by Lord Henry Cavendish using a torsion balance. The universally accepted value of G is 6.673 times 10 raised to negative 11. What will be the units of G? Force is Newtons. As the distance is in meters, we have meters squared. And as the mass is measured using kilograms, we multiply this with kilograms raised to negative 2. This is the value of the universal gravitational constant. Let us now join our group of discussion and please answer the following questions. Yeah, you can choose a representative, then you can write the question. Then uh, on this flash disk, you will find a lab textbook for students. We are discussing. You finish question number one? Question number one. Can we do yeah, questions? yeah, all questions you can do it. We have weak force. We have a weak force between the Earth and the Moon. Yes. That's why the earth is not falling on that one. Yes. Now, number one, it is over. Yes. Yeah. 
five minutes more. From you, those idea from unit number eight, you will find now the answer why the moon not falling on the earth. And also, please focus for also for Newton's first law, saying that the body will continue to move in its direction if there is no force acting on it. The moon is rotated that move in such a motion. Time is over. Let us now present those ideas. Yeah, I can start with group number one for first question. Group number one. So this is group number one. Uh, we discussed about the Newton's law of gravitation. Uh, we saw that the uh, everybody in the universe attract each other with a force that is uh, directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of distance between them. Thank you so much. Then the uh, secretary can write for us. Yeah. Thank you so much for first group. Then other group, please. Who can add more? Yes, group number four. Thank you. As they say, F is the force of attraction and G is the gravitational force. M1 is the mass of the body, one which is greater than the M2, which is the mass of the object 2, and the D squared is the distance squared of the between the two objects. Thank you. Is the, any group has something to add for this one? Any group please has something to add for this one? For Newton's law of gravitation. Deborah? What I can add is the value of the gravitational constant. It is the value of the gravitational constant. Okay, thank you so much for all group, please, for those ideas. Then let us go to next question. Write down the properties of gravitational force. Uh, thank you. We have been discussing about the gravity in the universe, and this question asks us uh, the properties of the gravitational force. Uh, firstly, the gravitational force is always attractive. As we have said that gravity is the force of attraction that pulls two massive objects towards each other. So it's always a, uh, a force of attraction, unlike the electromagnetic, uh, the magnetic forces that are always attractive and repulsive. Uh, secondly, it acts, to, it acts towards the center of the Earth, or it acts towards the center of the massive bodies. As we have said that the gravitation force uh, uses distance in the in the formula, as you have said in the law, and the distance between the two massive bodies that have been said are not the distance between the two ma the, the, the massive bodies uh, physically, but it's the distance between the the, the objects from the center of the masses. It is also the weakest force in nature. Uh, from the research in uh, in our group, we have seen that the the nuclear force is is bigger than the. The, the gravitational force. Uh, the gravitational force is radio. As uh, we can explain this as that uh, the far you move from the center of the earth or the far you move from the object which is pulling uh, uh, another, the gravitational force becomes less. Uh, it's, a it's, it's a conservative force which means that an object being act acted upon by the gravitational force and the object is moving in a circular path. It's the, the gravitation force, when it's calculated, it becomes zero. So that's why it is conservative. It also holds good over a wide range of distances. As you have seen that in the universe, there are many heavenly bodies and they attract each other. So that means that the gravitation force can not only act between two bodies that are on the Earth, but can also act between two bodies, two heavenly bodies like planets, which are millions and millions uh, kilometers afar from each other. So thank you. This is what I have found in our group. Yeah. 
Thank you so much for this group. Please, for those uh, good idea about the properties of gravitation force. Yeah, uh, another group, please, has the idea about this one. Kaneza, add one idea for this one. Thank you. Thank you. Another idea we found that it is an action reaction pair. It means that our, as we have studied uh, the Newton's uh, laws of motion, uh, the Newton's third law, it, it is an action reaction. It means that if body A exerts a force on body B, then body B is also going to attract, to, to I mean to exert uh, an equal and opposite force to that body A. So I think that um, we say that it is an action reaction pair because the force uh, which one body, that force which, uh, which that one body is the earth attracts the second body which is the moon. It is equal to the force which the moon also acts on the or the or that body which is the earth. Thank you. Please let us go to next question. Group number five, please. They can present about this one. Yeah. Thank you. The third question is that if the gravitational force is attractive in nature, why is the moon not falling on the earth? Uh, here, by basing on uh, Newton's law of motion. There is a Newton law of motion which states that every object persists in its state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless it is compre compared to change the state force impressed on it. On it. This is the Newton or the law we based on finding the solution for this. The solution is that the moon doesn't fall into the earth by the gravity because it moves fast enough to avoid this. So instead of falling, it keeps on orbit around the earth. If it is moved too slow, it would crash into the earth. If it is too fast, it would escape into this. This is why the moon doesn't fall onto the earth, because it's, uh, it has a fast speed to maintain its rotation and the movement around its orbit. Why it does not fall onto the earth. Thank you. Thank you so much for your idea. I think the idea is clear. Now, please, the group, they can share those documents, group number four to number one. Share those copies, please. Then they can read what you wrote it about that one. Yeah, uh, this question number five, it is the homework. Question number four is the homework. Question of number five, also, it is a homework. This question number five, you will find in the lab student's book. Yeah. Senior four. Senior four, physics. Yeah, page 337, question number three. You will do this one as the homework. You will submit before starting also the other topic. Who can tell us the unit we discussed today? Ave. Thank you. We have discussed about the Newton's law of gravitation, which states that every particle in the universe attracts every other particle with a force which is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the mean distance between them. Uh, we have also seen the properties of the gravitational force, which is uh, it's always attractive in nature. It is a central force. It, it is a two-body interaction. It is also a conservative force, and it is an action-reaction force. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please see you for next lesson. We have learned about the universal gravitation field potential. What I have learned that are the the different are the different definitions in the in the universe of the universe and the gravity, and also the Newton's law of the universal gravitation force, which is the it is that every object attracts each other with a force directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. And I've also seen about the gravitation force and the properties like it's, uh, it's always attractive, it is a conservative force, it, uh, it is a reaction and action force and many others. Uh, I have seen that the Newton's law of gravitation help us to describe the uniform circular motion and also to launch uh, the satellites in the, in the space from the Earth. Thank you. 
we have seen about Newton's law of gravitation it can help us in many things where like in air spaces ships and we saw that due to the mass which are uh, as we've seen in the formula that, that which is gravitational force times mass one times f2 over the distance squared which is the in terms the law of gravitation we think that it can help us in many things that that is the reason why the all things that exist on the earth surface fall on it or come back to the ground thank you uh, the methodology i used to teach this kind of lesson it is a learner centered method where the learners must be the source of information and teacher guide them to have information about the, to the lesson. The objective of this lesson is to help the learners to know about the motion of the planet and the force acting between those planets.